Hello everybody, welcome back. And today, let's talk approach energy management. Now this can seem like a simple thing, but people that go through the training centers of the airlines of the world, they're so used to dealing with instrument conditions and emergency this and that, and then all of a sudden they go out on the line and they operate day to day, and somewhere upwards of 80% of what we do are visual approaches, and we have people still configuring because they built certain habit patterns much too early that was maybe more applicable for those, whether it's emergency conditions or instrument conditions. And I wanna just have a discussion about some points that are just good to know when it comes to approach energy management to ensure that you're operating it efficiently and predictably, all right? So one of the things I would like to, to just have everybody be aware of, when I'm in level flight, generically speaking for a lot of different aircraft types, when I'm in level flight, for every 10 knots I want to lose, that takes about a mile. So if I want to be 170 knots by this point, but I'm doing 250 now, then about eight miles prior, I want to be bringing those engines to idle to make that happen. And that's a pretty good rule of thumb to put you in that ballpark to be at the speed that you want to be at. So that's rule number one. Now we can translate that very nicely into the visual approaches because on the visual approaches, we often back those up with ILSs. And if we have an ILS in the box backing up our visual approach, it's typically gonna give you that white top of descent arrow, which is a pretty good indicator of where you would encounter the three degree glide slope. And again, generically talking a three degree glide slope, because we know that it could be 2.8, it could be 3.1, but I would argue we predominantly live in a three degree world. Well, for that three degree world we live in, Airbus has done you a favor. They have given you a match made in Airbus heaven. And that three degree world that we pretty much live in is the match made in heaven is gonna be that flaps two that Airbus has given us. Because if you watch how the Airbus flies flaps two on a three degree path, it is extremely fuel efficient. The majority of the time, if you pitch over onto a three degree path with flaps two, you are literally gonna be looking at idle flashing on the engine page there. But even if she's not flashing idle at you, if you watch the needles, they barely move away from idle. So even when it's not flashing idle, it effectively is idle and you can't get any more fuel efficient than idle. So this is the, what I like to call match made in Airbus heaven. Just have it in your head that three degrees and flaps two are effectively made for each other. And we wanna enjoy that benefit with how we operate the airplane. So how do we do that? I can see where I'm gonna encounter glide slope, which is typically in the three degree arena there. I know how to slow down prior to it so that I can tip over at a speed I want to be at. And then you could be 170 flaps two, which is usually my preference. You could be 180 flaps two, you could be 190 flaps two. Of course, ATC can direct speeds at any given time, so you have to factor all that into it. But generically speaking, I would like to, in my most perfect world, I'd like to tip over 170 flaps two under that three degree part of my day. Why is 170 my preferred way? Because that puts me so close to my next flap setting that I'm very, very close to be able to call for that flap three. Whereas if I'm 190, that's gonna delay me a little bit in my next flap setting when I get to that point where I wanna finish configuring. So given the choice, I would choose to tip over on that 170 flaps two configuration under the three degree glide path. And then quite frankly, once I do that tip over, oftentimes I want to simply enjoy the ride, all right? Because flaps two and flaps, I'm sorry, flaps two and, uh, and three degrees are effectively made for each other, you can enjoy the ride to a lower altitude so that we still abide by our stabilized criteria. Okay, right now at our company, our stabilized criteria is going to be geared down speed 180 or less by 1500 feet. Well, what I'm gonna to describe to you now satisfies all of that. We also want to be st fully stabilized by 1000. We must be stabilized by 500 or we're to go around. So those are the parameters we wanna live in. I wanna have my gear down, I wanna be less than 180 by 1500 feet, then I want to be fully stabilized 
by 1,000. That is the preferred thing to do, but we must be by 500. Well, what I'm going to talk about next is going to have you fully stabilized all the way back uh, to the approach at your final configuration prior to 1,000 feet. And what I'm getting at there is I'm going to go flaps three, I'm sorry, flaps two for my three degree glide path. I'm going to enjoy the ride. And what I like to tell people as they're dipping their feet in the water here and trying this out, try this a few times, be flaps two on the three degree path at let's say 170 knots, take that down to 2000 feet and then finish the configuration. Okay, when I say finish the configuration, it's kick it off with managed speed, Flaps three, gear down, final flaps full when you can, landing checklist, and now watch when your airspeed comes down and meets that magenta bug. And you'll notice that if you do that, typically speaking, you'll probably be in the neighborhood of uh, 1,300 feet or so when you do it. So do it a couple of times to get comfortable with it. Try it at 2,000. And then honestly, for most of my visuals, I end up using 1,800. So on my visuals, I'll enjoy the ride at whatever I started at. I might have started at 3,000 feet when I tip over into that three degree path and while I'm at flaps two. I'll enjoy the ride down to about 1,800 feet, which is what I call a known quantity. I'm gonna enjoy the ride to a known quantity to make my results predictable. And then I'm gonna finish the job as far as configuration goes. When I get to that known quantity, so 1,800 is typically what I use in my visuals, then I go manage speed, flaps three, gear down, final flaps full. And now I am arriving at my V approach bug about 1,100 feet which makes our fully stabilized desired at 1,000, of course it must be at 500, and so I'm making our desired at 1,000 happy, I'm making all the other criteria happy, I'm basically not dirting up too early, and I'm not dirting up too late, which puts me into that re arena where I'm running a very efficient approach, uh, where I'm not putting any of those parameters in, in, uh, in doubt, and I'm looking at effectively a lot of idle as I'm bringing it on down to that lower altitude or that known quantity where I just finished the job of configuring the airplane. Now, while we're discussing flaps two being such an excellent partner with a three degree path, keep in mind that the majority of all approaches factor in this three to one pathing that so dominates what we do in our business. This is good news for us because the vast majority of the approaches can be flown with this flaps two in mind that is so nicely accommodated for the typical approach structure, all right? So if you're doing an RNAV RMP approach that starts out and drives for a while as it's descending and then curves in towards the field that we see so often in this business, to be honest with you, my mindset is to get to the beginning of that approach with the flaps two, and then once I've got that flaps two, I let it work its descents all the way throughout there, and the vast majority of the time, not always, you gotta check. You got to double check, okay, is this steeper than usual? Is this shallower than usual? But even if it is shallower than usual and it uses some power, odds are, regardless of which setting you're in, you may be adding that power in there anyway. And if it is steeper than usual, then fine, we'll use some speed brakes here and there to accommodate it. But by and large, the vast majority of the time when you're shooting these approaches, you can be hitting that initial approach fix and you can utilize flaps two to good effect to accommodate the three degrees between points that is so prevalent through the majority of most approaches uh, where you are now coming into this with a very solid mental game plan. I'm gonna endeavor to get my energy package to allow me to begin this descending part of the approach with that flaps two then I'm going to enjoy the ride at that flaps two for a while till I get to that known quantity. Could be 2,000 feet, could be 1,800 feet if I'm shooting my visuals typically, could be 2,200 feet if I'm doing a 190 flaps two. Uh, that helps you a little bit because 190 is a little bit further from my next configuration to flaps three. 
So it takes me a little bit more time while I'm working that descent to get to that flaps three speed. So if you do it right at 2000, it'll still work if you're 190 flaps two, but it's close. So I usually will try to space it out a little bit more. If I'm specifically 190 flaps two, then maybe I'll work at the 2200 feet to begin my final configuration for that approach. But I want you to take this whole discussion and know that you can bring that into the majority of approaches and you can begin those approaches. You may have multiple points to do as part of that approach. Honestly, most of the time I am enjoying the ride at flaps two for the vast majority of that approach till I get to that lower known quantity where I can get predictable and repeatable performance where once again, I'm not dirting up too early and I'm not dirting up too late. All right, try that out, see if that helps, see if that makes your energy management more thoughtful and planned out ahead of time and more predictable in its results. I hope that helps and I hope to see you next time. Thank you.